Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel where the gnomes live. This is Sharon Oyella and today I'm going to show you how I made some of this glass you see on my table. So first of all we have a little piece of glass from my beaded lamp. It's not real glass, it's plastic, but I'm going to show you how I shape it in this video. And I also made some drinking glasses, one with a bit of milk and one with water and ice in it. So when I started the video, all I had planned was the lamp glass and the two uh, drinking glasses, but then I started getting more ideas, so towards the end of the video, I also put together this little ketchup bottle. I'll show you how to make a cap for it, how to add the ketchup inside, how to close up the bottom, and then I also, at the very end, threw together a little jar of pickled eggs. And for the eggs, I'm using Sculpey clay, Sculpey 3 clay, and the glue that you see in this video that I'm using for the uh, eggs and also for the water is just a uh, glue. It's just a liquid glue. It doesn't have to be this brand or this type. Any clear drying glue will work. I just had this on hand and I like the little tip on it which made it easier for me to pour in there. I'm also using in this video some tacky glue, a hole punch, scrapbooking paper, I also used a small paintbrush and some paint, of course, acrylic or chalk paint, either one will work. A pair of scissors. I used a little bit of hot glue, not very much. So in the next clip I'm going to talk about the tubing that I used to make the glass and how I shape it. Alright guys, so this is something that I just happened upon by fluke accident because I saw a tutorial online on using candle flame in hard plastic for making glass. So I will put that link in the description box below because that gave me the idea for this uh, using heat. I didn't think flame would be good on soft plastic because I think it would just melt it. I thought if I used heat and soft plastic together maybe I'll get the result that I was looking for and I did. So this is fish tank tubing. This one is 10 millimeters across. So it's a skinny tube and I'm using the mini glue gun. So I'll show you my larger glue gun. Now you'll have to excuse this glue gun. It's very very messy. I use it on moss and stuff all the time so it looks very dirty. So you can see that difference in the size of the nozzles. This one won't work. I've tried it. It's just too big. So you want the mini glue gun. You also want to make sure that the nozzle is nice and clean and you don't have any glue in there. I, I did have glue in mine but I didn't push the trigger so it didn't matter. But if your glue gun tends to drip out a little bit, just make sure you don't have any glue in there when you start uh, shaping the glass. So first of all, we're going to heat up the glue gun and I let it heat up for about five minutes. And while it's heating up, I get a little piece of the tubing cut and then I go over to my kitchen sink. So let's head over there now. And this end here that I cut, I made sure to cut it as straight as possible. I don't want any angles because I'm gonna be um, shaping it on to this nozzle here. I want it to go all the way to the end and that's going to be the end of our glass. And now we're going to put it on our heated up glue gun. And it's just going to take a few seconds for it to loosen up while we're pushing on it to get it all the way to the end. We want to get it to the end of that nozzle. And I'm pushing quite hard. And I'm not twisting the glass, or the plastic I should say, and don't bend this straight part. Try to keep that as straight as possible. And I'm almost there. Almost there. There we go. I got to the end. So I'm just going to hold that for a few seconds. And the tip is very hot, so I'm just going to move my fingers out of the way. So I'll take this off and show you how much bigger it is now. So you can see it's quite a bit bigger than when we started. But I want it bigger even. And I want it to hold that shape, the shape of the nozzle. So what I'm going to do before I put this back on, I'm going to unplug my glue gun. Of course, water and electricity do not go hand in hand. I'm going to put a little stream of cold water here. I'm going to place this back on all the way to the end. Make sure it's all the way to the end. And holding it as straight as possible, we're going to cool this right down while it's sitting on the nozzle. And keep it pushed up to the end. 
So I'm just pointing the nozzle down towards the drain and then letting the water run over it and cool it down. And it's going to shock that plastic into the shape that it's in and it's going to hold that shape forever. And I want to cool it right down before I take it off. Then I can turn off my water and then pull this off. And if you've um, twisted it at all and uh, when you pulled it off it looked a little bit bumpy on the end, don't be afraid to reach in there with your fingernail and pull any bumps out, like any bumps of plastic. You can do that. It's not going to wreck it. I've done it a few times on some pieces that I made that didn't quite turn out exactly how I wanted them to. I just reached in there with my thumbnail and kind of pulled any bumps away. So let's head back to my desk now and I'm going to show you how I trim this up to make the the lamps and also how to make them into little glasses for drinking out of. So now all we have to do if we're making the lamp glass is just trim it. So I'm going to trim the skinny end of course. So at the end of this video I'll link you to the video I have on making these little lamps. There's a lot of you that won't need any help with that part so I just wanted to get you started with the glass part. Now the other thing I made was these little glasses and you can make these a variety of different sizes of course. And we're going to try to cut this as straight as possible because we do want it to be able to stand up. Alright so we have our bottom of the glass and it's wide open we don't want that. We want to close it up like I've done here. We want to give it a bottom and I did that with hot glue. So I used my high temperature glue gun and I have my stainless steel ruler here because I'm going to use it like a countertop. So as soon as I put the hot glue on there I'm going to place it right on top of my stainless steel ruler. Just a little dot like that and then work very quickly. Just get it right down on top of that ruler and flatten it right out. Okay and it should dry very quickly and there we go we have our bottom of our glass. Now you would really want the bottom on there of course because of looks and also if you wanted to put some paint in there because you could put in what look like milk or juice or anything you want and it will hold it liquid in there while it dries. Okay so all we have to do now is just trim up around the ed edges of the bottom of the glass where the glue is sticking out of. So after you trim it up uh, you can also use sandpaper around a little emery board and just go around if you wanted to do that as well. Okay so now that we have that closed up I'm just going to play around with a couple of ideas I had for making a glass of milk and also a glass with ice in it. So I'm going to do the milk first and I'm just going to try to get the uh, white paint in there without making too much of a mess. <laughs> so I went a little bit too quickly. I could have been more careful when I was pour putting it in there. I'll just take a q-tip and clean up around the top edge there. And once I get this cleaned up I can just set it aside and let that paint dry and then I'll have a glass of milk. So next I want to do the water with ice cubes. So what I'm using is these little things that I found in the dollar store. It's for filling up a vase. They look like little ice cubes. I'm just going to take two or three of them and just pop them in there. I could have put the glue in there first. Alright guys, so I have another surprise for you which wasn't planned when I started this video. We're also going to be making a bottle of ketchup. I'm going to show you that in a second. But I was just going to show you the finished glass of water. Turned out really well with the ice in there. And then my glass of milk is now dry and looks great. So I'm pretty happy with that. So I just want to point out, to make it very clear, that you can make these any size you want. So of course you just decide where you're going to cut the bottom of the glass and where you're going to cut the top. Alright, so when I was wrapping up the video I was looking at it and I started to see a bottle. See it? And then I made a cap. So I'm going to show you how I did all of those things in the next clip. So let's get started. So I think the best way to go about this is paint the inside. Because paint will stick to plastic. And I can bring it up right to about there, I think. I'll leave the neck free of any paint. Alright, I think that paint is dry enough 
inside. Now I will close this bottom up just like I did the glass, but I'll have to use a little bit more glue. So I'll go all around the whole edge. And I'm just going to push down. I was thinking about a cap, and I think the easiest thing I can do is make little circles with this hole punch. And then I glued four of them together. Alright, my friends, I am popping in with another edit because I just wanted to show you the difference in the size of caps that you can make. So what I used was scrapbooking paper and my hole punch. And for one of them I did eight, and you just take those and add a dot of glue in between each one and let them dry. Okay, and this one here, my little ketchup bottle, has four of those scrapbooking papers holes <laughs> glued together. And then there's this one here. Look at the difference in size. I did eight. So here's another bottle that I'm working on. You can also paint these too. And there, the bottom is closed up, so that's awesome. Now I will trim it just like I did the glass. If I felt I needed to, I could paint that bottom too, but I think it looks just fine the way it is. So this cap, I think I will use tacky glue. I'm just going to take a little bit of sandpaper and just rough it up on the bottom, just so the glue really has something to grab onto. I'm sure you guys will come up with some pretty awesome ideas of your own. This is just something to help you get started. Alright, I kind of messed that up a little bit because um, I wanted that white glue out of there. It would have dried clear, but I was impatient and I tried to get it out of there and I made a mess of the paint inside. So I'm going to try to make another one, but I just printed off this little bitty label. Now, I am not a resizing expert at all for labels. I just find Google images and then I'll open them up in paint and uh, resize it down to about 10% of its original size if it's a great big one. And then um, I'm using Windows Gallery to open them up again. And then I print it off in a size that will work for my label. So for this one I used three by five I believe three by five sheet you can Google how to resize photos I'm not the one to do tutorials on that one day I'll figure it out so we are in the next day and I didn't film this little jar because it's gonna it's making this video too long but I want to give you another idea so I'm just gonna give you a couple of tips about this jar and I just made a few little eggs out of this Sculpey 3 just roll them in my hand and then bake them really low temperature because they're so small probably about, I think it was like 200 and I did it bake them for about eight minutes and the lid is just made out of a little circle and then once I had my circle made I just made an, an impression with the jar itself so I will have a permanent little stopper there so I don't need to glue that lid on now I can just pop it on and it stays in place so this doesn't hold very many eggs. I only made four about this size here. Four all together. And when I put them in there, they, they just lined up and they looked really funny. So what I ended up doing was cutting them in half and then it looks like more eggs in there. Looks like the jar is full. And then I squeezed in some of this clear glue after the eggs were in there. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut my other egg in half. Let's see if I can fit that one in there and then I'll put the lid on. So I think I got a half an egg. Yeah, I got I managed it. So I got three and a half eggs in there, but it looks like a lot more because I cut them in half. So there's another idea too, so you can make a little jar out of that. They're small, but they can still work. Alright guys, I'm going to wrap up the video now. And before I go, uh, also be sure to look at the connections. Um, I made a little vase. I didn't even have to give it a bottom because it was thick enough. And looks pretty enough just the way it is and had a pretty little vase so with this one shape that we made with the hot glue gun we ended up with um, different ideas the little jar some glasses uh, bottles and the top for a miniature bead lamp 
So I think that's pretty cool with just that one little shape. Depending on where you cut it, you can get yourself a bunch of different things so you can fill up the shelves in your dollhouse. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. It helps me out a lot when you do that. Also be sure to post pictures on my Facebook page where the gnomes live if you make any of these items here. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you super soon.